Okay, so first I wanna talk about sketches. What am I looking for with sketches? Sketches are gonna be on pages 28, 29. You have three rectangles. Guess how big they are? Four by six, okay? Six by four rectangle. So um, I know we've doing, we have been doing lots of parts. We are making one coil pot, just one. So you could spend all your time making this one piece really, really good, okay? So I have three rectangles for you. I am grading one sketch, okay? So if you need all three to doodle, that's fine. I am grading one, okay? So what am I looking for with your sketches? These are four by six rectangles. Therefore, if you're doing squatty, okay, from the bottom line all the way to the top because that's your height, right? If you're doing tall and skinny, you're gonna flip it the other way. Your foot should hit the bottom. The top part of the neck should hit the, thank you, hit the top part there, okay? So whichever way you go, you should go from bottom to top, <coughs> yeah? And then for width, we should touch the sides at some point. If you wanna go a little bit wider, if you wanna go a little bit taller, you can just go outside of the rectangle. Um, but looking at this, that was my sketch, here's my coil pot. Looks pretty similar, right? Okay, so we're looking for a pretty accurate sketch of what you're going for, okay? And then as far as your designs go, you'll have time to research designs a little bit more. Notice I did not do figures. I have no interest in drawing figures because I think it's hard to draw figures. So I went with designs that are reminiscent of some of those cultures, okay? I also wrote on here how I'm going to apply those designs. So some of my circles are gonna be impressed. My lines are all carved, okay? You don't have to like draw lines to everything. So I just made a line to one of my diamonds. All of my diamonds are carved. All of my circles are impressed, okay? So just tell, tell me how you're getting there. Okay, you can see here, um, my circles are impressed, my lines are carved, and then where I shaded is Engo, okay? So that's all the labeling I need for this one. Um, make sure it's a shape that is gonna work, okay? You've got page 27 in here with good and bad shape, so if you need to look at that. And then you've got those Greek pottery styles on the PowerPoint on Schoology if you need that, okay? Any questions about sketches? When are they due? Thursday. Thursday, okay. So, first thing that I need to do is make my template. So, in order to make sure that I stick to the height that I need and I stick to this shape, I'm gonna make a template. So, I'm gonna look at my sketches and I'm gonna have pieces of cardstock. So, if you're doing a Tall and skinny, you'll take a tall and skinny one. If you're doing short and fat, you'll take short and fat. So I'm gonna do this one. So first we wanna make sure that my cardstock is the right height. Okay, so I'm just gonna kinda make a line and I'm gonna cut that so that I know that I have the right height. And then all you need to do through the middle of this is draw the outline, just one outline. So you don't need to worry about getting it perfect on both sides. So through the middle, I'm gonna draw my outline. Okay, if you wanna try to like make this really dark so you can trace it, you can do that. Um, or you can just use pencil so that you can erase and redo it if you need to. Pretty good? Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna cut that. Okay, so if I'm gonna use this to hold up to my vessel to make sure I'm getting the right form. So this is the negative space, I did an okay job. Negative space, because it's not my actual vessel, this is the positive. Do I need the negative space or the positive space? Negative. I need the negative because I'm gonna be holding it up to this, right? So you need the negative space. So we need this not this. So we don't want the one that actually looks like your vessel, okay? So I'm gonna set all that aside. 
What is the first thing I need to start my foil pot? What do I need first? I need a slab, I need my foot, okay? So if you really want to, you can use the sticks and the rolling pin. If you're pretty confident about your slab rolling skills, you don't have to use the sticks. I'm gonna wedge, why do we wedge? Get out my air pockets, make sure we're nice and consistent. And then I'm just gonna use my hand. Okay, and I'm gonna push it down until we're about at quarter of an inch, okay? Okay, and I think that's probably pretty good. Okay, I would stick to circles and ovals for your base, for your foot. How do we get it the right size? How do we know what size? So looking at my sketch, any guesses as to how I know what the diameter of my circle is gonna be? What could I measure on my sketch? The foot, right, the bottom, okay? So I'm gonna take my ruler, I'm just gonna measure this bottom part. It's about three and three quarters. If you wanna round up, you can, that's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and go to four. We do have circle stencils. It only goes up to three. So if you need bigger than that, I'm gonna show you how to kind of eyeball it and make your own. You are welcome to trace things around the room. I've got tons of circles around the room. You're welcome to go around measuring and using them to trace, okay? Um, I would not go any smaller than two and a half, I don't think. Okay, otherwise you're gonna maybe have that collapsing base. So I need four, so what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna put my ruler down. I'm gonna put a dot at the end of my ruler, a dot at four, and then I'm gonna do that again, going this way, just to kind of give me an idea about where this needs to be, okay? So that gives me an idea. I'm gonna kind of sketch it out first. I'm not actually cutting through. If you cut through and it's not how you want it, you're gonna have to roll your whole slab again. But if I'm just kind of sketching it on here, if I don't like it, I can just smooth it away. Okay. That looks like a pretty good circle to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut it out. And then once I cut it out, you can kind of fix it up a little bit. So that was maybe a little thick on the edge. You can kind of roll it and just get it looking pretty nice, okay? So now I need to start coiling, okay? So I'm gonna wedge again. I would say for coils, you really wanna have pretty soft clay. You're gonna be touching it a lot. And we know that the more we touch it, the more moisture we take out of the clay. And if you take a lot of moisture out of the clay, it's gonna crack as you bend it. So soft clay is really good. Really soft clay is good for coiling. So I'm gonna start by kind of just squeezing it, okay, into the start of a coil. And then best way to roll a coil. We're gonna start with our fingertips. We're gonna rock to the heel of our hand and then we're gonna bring it back. Don't do this you're gonna get an oval, you're gonna get like a flattened coil, okay? So fingertips to heel and back. Notice I'm kind of moving my hands every time so that I'm rolling it out evenly, okay? I am adding some pressure, but not too much, okay? And I just wanna make sure that I'm getting it <coughs> fairly even. Now, as far as thickness goes, I am going to roll this thicker than quarter of an inch because I'm gonna to need to smooth it out. When I smooth it out, you're gonna lose some of your thickness. If your coil is already quarter of an inch when you smooth it, you're gonna have this thin, fragile wall. So as far as thickness goes, your thumb or the end of a fettling knife is the thickness that we wanna go for, okay? Don't go any thinner than that. All right, and you really don't want thicker either because you don't want it to be really thick and maybe explodey, okay? So now what I'm gonna do, looking at my template that I made, it goes out first, 
okay? So when I'm measuring my coil, I'm gonna put it half on my base, half off, because that's gonna make it start angling out to start with, okay? So I'm gonna measure, and I always cut off the funky looking end so that I have a nice flat end, okay? Okay, so that's good. Uh, little little ends, you do not have to slip and score, just blend them together, okay? The entire coil must be slipped and scored. So every time you're actually attaching the coil to your vessel, you must slip and score. One time I had this kid, he made a beautiful coil pot. It was so nice and he didn't slip and score his coils. So they stuck while his clay was wet, but then when it dried, I went to put it in the kiln as bone dry and I picked it up and it literally just fell apart. So make sure you slip and score every time you add a coil. I know that it seems like your clay sticks when it's wet because it does, it has stickiness in it, but when it dries, it loses its stickiness. So if you haven't glued them together with slipping and scoring, they're not gonna stay. So score both, remember really rough them up like Velcro, slip one. Remember that your slip is like your glue. So you want enough glue that it's gonna stick. You can always smooth away glue if you got too much. So make sure you get enough. And then I'm gonna wiggle that on there, okay? So you can see, okay, if I hold this up, we want it to hit that wall. Now I'm gonna smooth these in here in a second. So we're gonna look at this a little bit closer. I'm gonna put one more coil on there. Now, this one doesn't go all the way around. That is okay. You could just make another one. For demo's sake though, I'm gonna go ahead and roll a new coil that will fit all the way around. Um, but some of you may get to the point where your vessel's so wide that it's not gonna, it's gonna be difficult to get one that goes all the way around. And you can always connect more than one coil together, okay? So again, I'm gonna start squishing this into a coil. And then once we're kind of close, fingertips to heels and bring it back, okay? What thickness are we going for? thumb or handle end of a fettling knife. So for the first time, I'm not asking you to say quarter of an inch. Okay, pretty good. Looking at my template, where did I put my template? Oh, here it is. We're still going out, okay? So we still need to be half on the outside, half on the previous coil. Okay, little ends do not need to be slipped and scored, but definitely blend them together. Okay, and then I'm gonna score both really, really well. <coughs> score both, slip one. It does not matter which part you put the slip on. Okay, slip should be spreadable. If it's not, get fresh out of the barrel. Okay, I'm gonna wiggle this on. Remember, I was half on, half off. Okay, looking at that against doing a pretty good job. So now I've added two coils. Every two to three coils, blend them in and absolutely never leave my classroom without blending coils in. So if it's the end of the period, and I'm like, okay, clean up, don't leave it like this. Take the time to blend your coils in. Um, otherwise, it could dry just enough that it's too difficult to blend them in the next class period, okay? So we're gonna definitely blend and check our template every two to three coils. Never leave my room without blending your coils, okay? So for the inside, I'm gonna hold on the outside to kind of support so it doesn't flop out. And I'm gonna use my thumb. You can also use a wooden modeling tool. And I'm just gonna pull that clay down. So this is why we made them thicker than quarter of an inch. 
I'm losing almost half my coil just from blending it in, okay? Definitely support on the outside. I have to push fairly hard with my thumb to really get it to blend in. So make sure you're supporting on that outside part. Okay, and then you're gonna get all these ugly looking fingerprints. Okay, so then I'm gonna go around this way and smooth everything in, okay? You really wanna make sure that you do this as you go, especially if your vessel is gonna start getting more narrow, you're not gonna be able to get in there. So it's really important that you do this as you go. Also, you guys know now, we've done enough projects. Even if you cover your project up super duper well, it's still naturally just gonna dry out a little bit. So we wanna make sure we're blending in, okay? Much better, and then I could also take a damp sponge as well. For the outside, so if you decide that you do wanna keep your coils in certain <laughs> places, um, I would just take maybe a modeling tool a sponge, the rubber end and tool, and get your slip marks away, or your score marks away. Um, I am going to go ahead and blend them. Smooth Kidney is gold, I love this tool. So I kind of bend it a little bit, and then I'm gonna drag my clay up for my coils. You can kind of go every which way. Okay, so I'm gonna go around and do that. It's gonna look kind of ugly at first, but then again, we'll smooth. Okay, and then once I get everything smoothed in, then I'm gonna check against my template and we're gonna be able to make some adjustments if need be. I'm guessing that we will need to make some adjustments. That's again why it's important to check every few coils. Okay, so we're going every which way and then you guys know at this point, what am I probably gonna go over this with after I'm done? A damp sponge, yeah. To kind of get some of that smoothed in a little bit better. Okay, once my coil pot starts to get a little bit bigger, I won't flip it upside down. It was just easier to smooth this part when it was upside down. Okay, so then I would go around damp sponge. So now I want to check it against my template. Don't just check it in one spot. I would check it in four spots. Okay. So looking at it pretty good, but not really right on that edge. Right. Do you see that? I'm almost done guys promise. So what we can do now is kind of pinch it to get it to meet that edge. Okay. Okay, that's pretty good. We're gonna pinch it over here a little bit more. Again, why it's good to have a little bit of extra thickness in your coils, okay? So make sure you're checking every couple <coughs> coils. It's a lot easier to fix it with just a little bit at a time. If you get pretty much built and then you're like, this doesn't match at all it's gonna be a lot more difficult to fix it, okay? So we're basically right on in that spot. So you would just wanna make sure that you check it in multiple areas. Now, as we build up, when I need to start going in, rather than putting my coil half on, half out, I'm gonna put my coil half on, half in. So it's gonna start going in, okay? If you need to go straight up and down, you're gonna put it straight on top of that previous coil. Just make sure you're slipping and scoring really, really well. Every time you add a coil, check your template and smooth your coils every two to three coils and make sure your coils are thumb or settling handle thickness, okay? Questions? Yes. How do you the inside like? So for the inside, like on this guy, I was able to smooth it pretty well, like up until here. And then once we got up here, you kind of just stick your finger in and do the best you can. As long as you've done a really good job throughout the whole part that was easy to get to, um, you know, it should still be pretty sturdy. It's a good question. Any other questions? All right, you can go ahead and stop that for me. So, 